Okay, so we're going to make some uh, graphs from the data that we got back from the EcoCar survey that we sent out. Um, I've put the data here on the pages uh, and I've divided up into male and female and also to divide it up into questions as well. So we can see by question uh, what age group and the number of respondents that we got to our answers to various questions. So um, you can either take the data off this table here or I've also attached it to the bottom of the page. Uh, there's all the data there. Either way you'll need to do a little bit of, uh, a little bit of manipulation. There's a couple of ways that you can do your graphs in Google Docs. I'm going to show you them both now and just quickly should talk about the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, first of all, we've got to get the data into a Google Docs spreadsheet. So I'm just going to uh, select all by Control A and then copy using Control C. I'm going to go to Google Docs and I'm going to set up a new spreadsheet. I'm then going to use Control V to paste in my data. Now you can see that it's uh, pasted it in in this area. There's a few um, <clears throat> few extra rows that we don't need, uh, but that really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just going to pull this these two cells down to where they should be. Uh, delete that one and just pull the data into the top left hand corner by cutting control X coming to cell A1 and pasting again with control V. Now I need to move it into that top left hand corner because of one of the ways of uh, using the graph uh, tools that we can uh, that we can use to to get our information into our ePortfolio that relies on it being in the top left hand corner. So I've just organized the data a little bit there. Now one of the ways to produce graphs you've already done you go to insert chart it asks you what data you want to insert in this case we want A1 to A16 uh, and what kind of chart we want column chart, bar chart, pie charts etc. Now we've got to look at these graphs and see which kind of data or which kind of representation of the data makes most sense. Now for this one I think the column chart seems to be making most sense. We've got various columns here uh, based around different uh, age groups that have responded to the question. Okay. We can choose various options with the chart. For example, where to put the legend, which is the uh, the age groups. I think I'm going to choose to put it on the bottom. We can see that the uh, the answers to the questions we've got as the bottom axis, as the as the x-axis, and the number of respondents we've got as the as the vertical axis. So I'm just going to put that in as label. It's the number of respondents there, and the chart title is uh, how much would men be prepared? spend a new car. So when I've done that, I'm happy with the way my graph is looking, I save the chart. It comes into my spreadsheet and I can move that around. Chart tab here where I can do several things with it. If I choose to publish the chart, I haven't saved the spreadsheet yet, so I'm just going to save that. When I choose to publish the chart, it'll ask me who I want to publish it to. I want to, I want to let anybody in uh, Island School see it, so I'm going to press OK, and it will give me a piece of code. That piece of code I can take, Control C to copy, and come back to my ePortfolio. I've already set up a new page, I've called it EcoCar Survey Results page. And what I can do is just paste that bit of code in on the HTML view. Now 
and you can see that my chart has appeared in my page and I can write uh, my analysis of that chart of that information so I can see for example that uh, most respondents here just taking a very shallow analysis to begin with most respondents over 22 or 23 respondents out of our, of our total are prepared to spend between 200 and 299,000 so, so most male respondents would be prepared to to spend between 200 and 299,999 Hong Kong dollars. The gadget is now calculating and forming the graph which will appear in the preview view. And you can see it's pretty much the same as we had before. I've got a similar sort of options. I can put my legend on the bottom. I can give my vertical axis a title. I can give my chart a title. When I'm happy with everything, I can click OK. And that little gadget is embedded onto my page. I'll see the effect of that when I save my page. So I have two ways of getting the graph in. One, to cut and paste the image tag. Second one, to go and uh, use the tool to embed that in there. The difference between this graph and the top graph of the image is that we've got an interactive element to it here so I can actually see what these columns mean. I can see that for example that, that uh, we've got one respondent less than, who is prepared to spend less than $100,000 between the ages of 30 and 31. So we've got a little bit more interactivity with that graph. Got a little bit of a spelling mistake there so I could go back and uh, correct that by editing my page. And that is it.